What is good? We're back with a fresh crack. How's it going over there? An obnoxious slurp right on cue. All right. So, bye bye. Bye bye. Got your boy uh, CM here. We got Case old Jay cam. Wayne's on the ones and twos. Case cam. Case cam. <laughs> Ready to go. Uh, no big D tonight. No, uh, no Matt Foreman tonight. Giving them the week off. Uh, you know, it was a long season. It's a long season. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, t- but today we're going to get into, uh, you know, four quarterbacks, four cheap quarterbacks that could win you the league. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, you know, the, some of the, most of these guys are overlooked, uh, especially in our judging this mostly off our ADP. But what we've also seen in joining other people's mock drafts and, and just generally uh, this is kind of how things go. Uh, people don't buy in or, or let one bad season kind of get you down a little bit. Uh, some of those guys from last year uh, who, who would have been uh, around some of the ranges where we're drafting these guys, Geno Smith, uh, Jared Goff, Daniel Jones. All guys who helped you get to the playoffs and or win your league last year and now have very good value were guys probably drafted in the same range of a lot of these guys as we're about to talk about this year. Uh, so, you know, I know it's super flex and that's what we're talking. And, and you'd certainly want a strong QB room, but it's not always the end all be all. Uh, obviously, you know, I would prefer to have one really good anchor down uh quarterback but you know that that's not always a hundred percent necessary i you know i think you can get away with and like i said gino and golf and and dj were probably a lot of people's third quarterbacks last year and and by the end of the season uh you know could have been their qb1 and or a great qb2 i mean gino finished uh top five in overall points uh daniel jones was uh nine in overall points and jared golf was was 10 in overall points so um you know some really, really good play out of those guys and some a big bump in value for those guys uh, moving forward. So right off the rip on our list, we're going to lead off with Matthew Stafford. Uh, Which, uh, look at that. That's the ADP. The FFD ADP. He's somewhere down in the in the in the 10th round and on that number in front of me. I just in one of the mocks we just did. I got him in the 11th. Uh, so I've been loving taking some some Matthew Stafford oh, here. There he is, ten two, super cheap, and you know, just last year, and or just two years ago in twenty twenty one, he was the QB five. He won us uh, so, a ship, uh, a, a, a ship, and an FFPC Triflex two fifty. Uh, him and him and Joey Burrow uh, coming and getting hot at the right time, and that's kind of you know how that goes, uh, but. Like I said, QB five and twenty one. So not too long ago, we know the Rams kind of fell apart after a big Super Bowl run. Uh, the right tackle Havistein was the only offensive lineman to play more than fifty percent of the snaps last year. Uh, so that 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 group was a little bit better at the end of the season. You saw that with Cam Akers coming in and being a little bit more efficient. Uh, now Stafford had a, a, a plethora of injuries last year and certainly wasn't right. Uh, but McVay's back re-energized, seems to have uh, more control over what's going on. Uh, they, they drafted uh, the TCU guard who can kind of play all over the line in the second round, which would have been their first pick. Yeah, early there in the second round. Matt, Matt Oliva, I believe is Steve. his name. Steve Oliva. Uh, Number 36 overall. He can kind of play anywhere on that line, was a good good player at, uh, at TCU. Has some experience at left tackle from high school, but didn't play that uh, necessarily anywhere at TCU, but I believe played everywhere else. Hopefully we're going to get a little more continuity, uh, a little bit better of an offensive line throughout this 2023 season. We can get a healthy Cooper Cup uh, and, and get Stafford back to kind of where he was. But really, if you go back to that, it's crazy. His ADP is 136 on sleeper right now. That right. Is quite a quite a value there. What is it on ours? Well, while you figure that out, he it was in 21. He was 26 and basically time to throw with 2.66. So we don't even need Stafford to have an elite offensive line. We just need him to be healthy and be able to be kept upright for most of the season uh, where, you know, in 21, he was third in completion percentage uh, or sorry, six in completion percentage, third in completions, third in attempts. Uh, third in yards per attempt, 50 touchdowns. That's good for number one. Really, really strong uh, in a lot of categories there. Uh, 20 INTs in that season, but when you're going to throw 50 touchdowns, uh, you know you're gonna you're obviously taking some risks there. Just a really, really strong season in 21, and he's somebody right now that's going 
what do you say? One thirty on one, sleeper. One thirty six on sleeper. On sleeper's regular just, ADP, and, and he's in the ten two maybe. For, yeah, he's for us. ten two, which is one ten. One ten. So we even have him elevated a little bit. Like I said, just got him in the eleventh round. We're talking that may be twelfth, thirteenth round. Stafford. That's somebody who could obviously easily help you win a league, get to the playoffs. You're drafting him most likely as your QB3, maybe even your QB4 if you're stacking a lot of depth, especially on a sleeper ADP. Uh, and I think he could pay real strong dividends. The surrounding cast is is maybe not excellent, but, you know, I, I think he, he'll well outperform what the ADP is if he can stay healthy. Yeah, it's all about the health. And you, you mentioned that he suffered through a plethora of injuries, only played nine games, uh, had the non-surgical inflammatory inflammatory injection in the early off season, which led right. to elbow tendonitis. It just started off rocky, right? He probably right rushed rip. it back too right. soon because they had Super Bowl follow-up expectations with, you know, everybody still in town there. Um, and then had a week nine concussion, misses week 10, comes back in weeks 11, gets an, another combo platter of a concussion with a spinal cord contusion. And they basically shut him down the rest of the year. So I think... One of the cool things, and maybe we'll, I guess we could throw him on right now, is what I like about taking Stafford is not only is there a value for him to jump up or just get you through this year, but you can also take like Stetson Bennett late. Sure. He doesn't even get drafted in our 18 round mocks sometimes. And right. Now he usually doesn't unless. So it's a takes, free yeah. backup. And right. I, I want to get some Stetson for free, even if I don't have Stafford. But if I do, it's easy, right. easy pick easy pick and an easy cut if you really needed to cut that cut cost right. you nothing getting a, getting some good reviews and, and isn't sexy but was was good in college it's a wiener uh but but stafford man is is number one on my uh cheap quarterbacks that could help you win uh right now on super flex and and you know some of these guys will also have appeal moving forward um you know if stafford isn't i don't think is is certainly not dead after this year especially if things go well it just depends on hurt. whether he wants to play right. continue or not he's not he's only he's 35 i think so He's not. Nah, he's uh. He's you're right. He's 35. Right. Just turned 35 in February. He has two more years left on his deal. They don't even have a potential out until 26. So, right. If he's gonna play, it's gonna be for McVeigh. McVeigh. McVeigh coming in here and, and and you know I, I think I think you see the the Rams stable out. You know stabilize a little bit. I don't think it's gonna be any Super Bowl aspirations, but I think you're gonna see you know a nice little step forward uh, from where the Rams were and a bounce back a little bit and be be a tougher team than everybody I think is thinking. And, and Stafford's just a a screaming value for me uh, to help you win this year. So uh, let's keep it moving. Uh, let's go to our next guy. We'll go. Uh, we'll go Brock Purdy next. All right. With Brock here, we don't exactly know what we're going to get in the beginning of the season. Again, I guess we apparently like elbow injuries uh, for, yeah. for our for our guys. That probably we like. not great. Uh, but <laughs> we don't exactly know if Brock's going to start. The early report is that he is, and I hope it's not a rush back. If it is, it's a bummer, and it's no no shade on Trey Lance. I like Trey Lance. Uh, I would love to see Trey Lance get an opportunity either with the Niners or, or I'd rather see him get an opportunity somewhere else where somebody isn't breathing down his throat because I do think the kid has a lot of potential and hasn't really got a shot. But I think it's going to – he'll be hard-pressed to keep Purdy off the field. I mean, you just – what you and they've they've alluded to that. Purdy deserves the, the, the shot. They could be – in the Super Bowl, if not for an unfortunate injury um, against Philadelphia, we will never know, uh, but was uh, had a really good run to there. He The, the Niners were averaging 34.8 points per game uh, with Purdy uh, over his six starts uh, from, from a quick Google there. Jimmy Gar- Garoppolo over the career in 2022 or to 2022 was averaging around 24.7 points per game. Uh, so, you know, Niners offense unfucking locked with Brock Purdy. And it was evident when you watch them. Um, it was just what you're getting from Brock Purdy, what you wouldn't get from Jimmy Garoppolo is you get the escapability. It may not necessarily convert to anything fantasy production wise for him rushing necessarily game in, game out. But what it allows them to do is to keep plays alive, to be able to make the first guy miss and shit. If you can get any extra time in a Shanahan scheme system, you're going to find pay dirt time after time because this is a yak offense and the plays are designed to be that way. And if Brock can, can squirm away. Wait, it's a what offense? <laughs> it's a yak <laughs> offense. And you saw it with George Kittle. 
immediately when Purdy comes in, they, it, it was more opportunities for, for Purdy or for, uh, for Kittle. Yeah, when everybody's, it really all opened up. Right. When everybody's healthy on this team, it's going to be hard to pick out any one guy. Debo kind of got hurt who's the most. Got, right. Well, and Debo was kind of hurt last year uh, through a, a large portion of the season. And CMC's in there. So, But that doesn't do anything for Purdy but be fucking awesome. It might be a little damning and maddening sometimes in your fantasy players, season. But looking but at that quarterback. Purdy, if he can be healthy and play, you know. It's perfect for Shanahan's system like you right. got some stats here some straight facts right and and you can you can hate and on it, him if you want and be like he's not any, I don't know why everybody is so mad at Brock Purdy like, and they're mad not, at Kyle like, and well yeah he's not any good he's just a product of the system okay he fucking ran the system really well right all better the things than, that better they than want, everybody else all the things that you need to do in the system he like ranked number one in as quarterback a rookie, rating as a rookie didn't like at late season rookie right Came in and was and was outstanding. Um, and and these are from the the Larry Kruger show, or I'm not 100 percent sure how to uh, pronounce his name, but uh, coming out with some some straight hot fire with with Brock <sighs> Purdy stats. This is a you know this this op this this offense is going to function at its best with a play action. Uh, I heard George mm-hmm. Kittle kind of talking about a lot this of motion. a little bit and basically saying that Shanahan will run run plays that he knows aren't going to work just to set up that to basically what he calls unlocking the defense so that they know then then that same thing will be you know a play action pass off of that or a different uh look off that same look when they've lost two yards every time they've run that run play and you know so it's probably shut up george huh <laughs> let me talk about this shit out in public you know but so the play action pass purdy was 130.3 quarterback rating that's number one in the league uh in rhythm thrower uh 125.2 <sighs> uh number one in the league uh, pre-snap with pre-snap shift or motion in the uh in the play number one in the league outside the numbers 112.9 qb rating that's number one in the league is that good uh intermediate throws were at about 62.7 percent with jimmy they were at 80 percent oh. with brock purdy now will what it about always, the deep will it always be at eight at and 80%? everyone's mad about Probably jimmy for not. the medium right now the, the deep shots were s- similar for for Jimmy and Purdy, but but Purdy connected with more touchdowns and a few more completions and mm. explosives. That's than all Jimmy. you need. And like I said, there's outside the numbers where you can escape a little bit, get out of there, um, and then there's always going to be an option, a short little outlet that he can just dump down to and have let let the guy go to work. So Brock Purdy, for whatever get reason, get a little. Uh, if he hadn't have been hurt, I think he would be a little higher uh, in ADP and finish the season. Maybe they go to the Super Bowl. Maybe they don't. Maybe they lose to the Eagles. Who knows? Maybe it's um, a, maybe it's a better game to watch. But, but he has maybe he has a pretty good game because it looked like they had a pretty good game plan. And I feel like you know I think Kyle's very confident with Brock at the helm, and and I think you should be too as your as your QB three uh, draft wise, and then you know hopefully he'll play his way into your every week QB two. Um, and I, I think Purdy just undervalued right now on the FFD ADP. He is at let's see, nine hundred one ninety seven overall. Yeah. So which, and then that's a full round better or higher. Which we're we're going our values off of these drafts. Our all the, all this ADP data has come from uh, mocks that we've done in the pleasure chest with the patrons. Sometimes we send out a public invite on the twitters, um, but it's we're, it's usually got three or four of us of, of the tripod, quad pod, all up in there, and every single one of these drafts and people that listen to us and and kind of think the way that we think. Um, put together, you know, a slew of off-season drafts that we've been doing. There's probably there's pretty much one running all the time. Yeah. Um. And and so that's the data that we've compiled together to give you this. This is post NFL draft, and then we all, we would like to compare over to uh, sleeper where Brock Purdy is 118 overall. Yeah. Nice. So even more value on there. So I think still plenty of that. This is a little bit more long term play, whereas Stafford might be a little bit shorter term play, but maybe get you more points uh, this season. Purdy meat on the bone on the value and very good value still. So Purdy coming in at number two for me. Uh, number three, we're going to go McCorkle Jones. OK, uh, Mac Jones here. Is that really what it is? I believe that is his actual government uh, name. Um, Max way better. You know, we. We, we've I've been pitching Mac Jones all off season and I'll continue to pitch him here. Um, you know, not obviously not the season you wanted last year. Uh, started started off with a you know a little bit of a high ankle. Uh, yeah, a fucking high ankle sprain. I mean, give my man a break. It was a high ankle sprain. He, he missed three games, and that happened in week three. Right. And you know when you come back from that, you're never like right. Just quite right. It takes a minute. Right. 
He came back and then got benched again and then, you know, came, came back, benched. came back again. It's air um, quotes for the but, podcast. You know, th- this guy is, is, is their starter and you had fucking what's his face running the, as the OC last year. Um, What's the name I'm looking for? But fi- no, that's the one that no, came in. He, he's in there. Patricia. Now, you got you had Patricia who had Patricia. no Patricia running an offense last year. So can we just play defense on Mac offense? Would that work? Was clearly extremely frustrated last year, um, and but in his rookie year with McDaniel's, you you saw you know glimpses of of some good play. He had uh, five top ten finishes as a rookie, uh, as as points per game for a quarterback. Mm. Uh, he finished his QB 18 in 2021, but right around where Trevor Lawrence was in that range. And look what happens when you when you shift the culture of coaching. And now they did add some more pieces in Jacksonville for for Trevor to throw to, but nothing like crazy sexy. Nobody was excited before the offseason. They were all they did calling Jaguars they could. idiots. They did what and then they all could. of a sudden, look at what happened with Trevor there. They, they, uh, they found the decentest talent for the most if, money. If anybody, you're less scared of not having premier talent around and the offense being functioning fine, it's the Patriots. But you can't do so when you're operating with basically both arms and maybe a leg tied behind <laughs> your back because you got a defensive coordinator calling your fucking offense, which mm-hmm. makes no sense. So you got Bill O'Brien back in there who who uh, Bill's very uh, Belichick is very comfortable with. They've had good success together. He's back in there. He's going to get this ship straight. Mac Jones is going to come out and, and, and probably well outperform his ADP. Uh, you know, Hunter Henry uh, and, and Gusecki. It seems to be that it's maybe going to be a, a bit of a uh, 12 personnel kind of deal. That's what it looks like. It might be shaping up with it in, in New England, which, you know, we've all been pining for that since the Hernandez uh, Gronk days. Uh, we'll see. Uh, obviously, those guys aren't, aren't those two guys, but both very good receiving tight ends. Uh, Hunter Henry in 2021 was tight end seven. Uh, and Gasecki has been a guy who has had, you know, 90 targets in a season and 70 catches. Uh, so say what you want about Gasecki. He's definitely a little bit more of a wide receiver, but that's kind of what they need. Uh, and then you put Juju out there who hopefully can be healthy. Maybe it's DeAndre Hopkins out there put, on the other side. But if not, it's Devontae Parker. Put some good then, Juju out there. Then you could put Thornton out there and give you stretch, field stretching ability who got hurt in mini camp or in, in, uh, in the preseason last year and didn't get a whole chance to be a rookie in this full season and put it all together. Uh, suffered through a couple of injuries there. So Thornton uh, kind of can give them hopefully some explosives. How excited uh, are you about Gusecki? I'm pretty ex- like I'll draft Hunter Henry and Gasecki late in, in every draft. You know, we're only doing 20, 18 rounds in mocks. But, you know, once we get once you're going, you know, 25, 30 rounds. Yeah. Give me all the Gasecki and, and Hunter Henry I can get because I think there is. A, I mean, between those two, I think there's a really good chance of, of you know, 100 Some catches, 120 catches between those two guys. Like if we think it's going to go how we think it's going to go. Um, so. You know, uh, Hunter Henry, I think there could be nice little spot spot starts for those. And maybe one guy really takes off. Maybe it's Kaseki. Maybe it's Hunter Henry. Uh, You know, I don't know. But as far as I know, uh, as far as I I, I believe, Mac Jones, um, you know, was averaging 14 points per game uh, in that 2021 season. Had a couple of stinkers in there. He's a rookie. But there's also a .5 in there versus Buffalo when they threw the ball three times. Uh, So, you know, that's going to hurt his average uh, quite a bit there. and like I said, a couple stinkers in there. Hey, QB um, 23 is is a QB 2. Yeah, I got him at QB 18 from Fantasy Pros. So um, maybe he's a six point per. F- yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. But e- either way, um, you can't ever get everything you want in one spot. Right. So Mac Jones, uh, another guy who I, I think is going to outperform. And again, I think he's he's in that Jared Goff kind of range where nobody likes him right now. They hate him. And then he comes in and he performs well. And all of a sudden you're whether it's reluctantly or not, uh, you're you're down to have him as your QB2 all day long. And I think that's where we're going to end up at being with with Mac Jones. So Mac Jones coming in at, at number three there in, in cheap QBs who could really be to your favor and give you an advantage week in, week out uh, and help you build some some cheap depth there and, These and be QBs able to draft. We'll win you your league. Be able to draft other positions a little more robustly. Yeah. And come back and grab some of these guys if to you solidify. Can get one of them and save elsewhere and hit here, right. it's a huge advantage. Or if you don't really know what to do or there's no one you love, 
and you already have two QBs, strong QB three. Right. Because then you can trade them. You get in a spot where the or maybe they work out and you trade your QB right. two. Yeah, you sure. know, whatever it is, try and move up in QB value, get some future picks, whatever. Cap. You know, you're going to gain value from these guys. Is basically our point here. Right. Every every M- most of show them should, is like a. I think most of them should and and the last one here i don't know how much value you're going to gain and same with stafford like i think the value could be you know you, I, I don't think stafford i think the value will obviously go up on stafford if i'm if i'm liking him here a little bit but i don't know how high it'll go it'll mostly be points in your lineup for those guys party and mac jones i do project to be you know more like the golf uh gino kind of thing where they shoot up uh, quite a bit because they're they're younger here so number four on my list and last but not least i'm going ryan Tannehill here uh, kind of left for dead. Uh, just nobody likes him. And just just two years ago in 2020, um, you know, was QB seven, 21.9 points a game, 350 points overall, uh, 33 touchdowns and seven interceptions. Um, and then 21 was QB 12 still not terrible, but not awesome. 16.6 points per game, seven rushing touchdowns, and he was sixth in adjusted completion percentage uh, for for Tannehill there and then last year was a bit tumultuous it wasn't great um you know also had a had a high ankle at one point uh in the season uh and then came back and then was out again so clearly was never right um you know and they they, they invested their first round pick in in Peter Skoranek uh yep and they, they were dead last in pass blocking last year right per PFF uh, yeah he had an ankle sprain in week seven missed two games and then comp- probably compounded it high ankle sprain in week 15 misses the rest of the year Right. So, you know, Tannehill is left for dead. Like, I'm getting him in, like, the 14th round. I don't even know where he is. Yeah, and our ADP is at 13-11. We stopped color-coding it there. Uh, that's 154 overall. Looking at Sleeper, he's at 170 Right. So, overall. even a, another, another great value. Like, look, you can come in here and you can, <clears throat> you can draft, like I've been saying, when we've done some of these uh, live drafts here. Like, you know, I, I, can, I, I can I feel okay taking – you know, a shot on a Kenny Pickett, and I'll back it up with a Matthew Stafford. You know, maybe Kenny Pickett isn't exactly what I want right there, but I can come back with a, you know, or, you know, you can come in when you, if you do take a Bryce Young or a CJ Stroud early, hey, let's come back, or, or you drafted Kyler and you're excited about it. I'll come down here, I'll grab Tannehill as maybe my third, fourth quarterback, and, yeah. I, and I think he's going to be the guy who starts all year for them. I don't think... Malik's going to come in and scare anybody. I don't think Will Levis is coming in here necessarily scaring anybody into saying, hey, we're going to have to put Tannehill on the bench. I think Tannehill's got some juice left in him. He can he can run around a little bit, and he's had some really good seasons. Now, can you be upset about the surrounding cast for Tannehill? Sure, it's not great. I think Kyle Phillips is a pretty think, good player. I, I think, think Traylon Burks is really good. I think uh, and Nuke, you know, Nuke could go to one of these two co- four quarterbacks. Who's that we're ever talking got the about. most money? Um, right. Because Odell got so much. And, Odell. You know, they're going to have Chig and and Derrick Henry, which, you know, they've never also never, even when even when uh, Tannehill was putting up these huge numbers, who were their receivers? It was just Brown. Right. A.J. Brown and a couple other dudes, you know. So, you know, they can they can come in here and, and, and mash things up with a less that they're like the Patriots. You know? Yeah, exactly. So 2.0. They're not, they're not really concerned about what you think about them and, you know, I'm not really concerned what you think about Tannehill. You might think this is a stupid pickup, but he's a guy I think he's going to be Way to save him to the end. Right. That was a good move for I think, uh, <laughs> I think he's going to be a comments. starter all year round, all year long, and he could really help you out through bye weeks or injuries or shit. Maybe he's even playing really well, and the, the Titans are on a fucking heater, and you throw him in there on your QB2, and you got a bad matchup uh, for, you know, Kenny Pickett, who you might have drafted, or, 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 you know, Geno Smith is playing the Niners. You know, maybe you don't want to start him against there on the road or something, you know? Uh, so, uh, or like I said, you drafted a Stroud or a young and you're experiencing some growing pains and you're like, Hey, I would, I would, you know, obviously I'd want you to get a Stafford maybe more than a Tannehill, but Tannehill's a guy that you can come back with in your QB four, QB three for next to nothing. And I think he could provide you a nice little floor, uh, throughout the season and, and, and really help you out. Uh, so, you know. Uh, these hopefully are a little helpful to you. I know they're not nothing sexy, uh, but like I pointed out in the beginning of this thing, Geno Smith, Jared Goff, and Daniel Jones were not sexy last year. And all of those guys were QB, all top 10 quarterbacks last year. Uh, you know, all really helped a lot of teams make it to the playoffs or win them some money. Uh, so, you know, sometimes 
you got to think a little outside of the box. We, we get so caught up in what ex, what happened last year, even though we shouldn't when we're playing Dynasty. And, you know, some of these guys have a lot of good potential or have had really good uh, stretches in their career before. So let's not forget about those guys and, and don't panic and have to feel like you have to get a million qu- quarterbacks at the top half of this uh, super flex draft. You can wait a little bit and grab... You know, the Russells, the Genos, and the Kennys in the mid still love those guys a lot. Still love all those guys. But you could still come back and get Matt Stafford and Tannehill on the back end of, of, of all that. So Yeah, I, I don't really hate taking a swing on hardly any of these later round quarterbacks. Right. Uh, that is kind of the point. We try to pick out our favorite ones. If I could throw a couple more on there. Also, I just wanted to point out, you know, if you did take Matt Stafford, or uh, if you did take Ryan Tannehill, you could probably get Hooker or Willis pretty cheap. Hooker goes around right where Tannehill's going. Uh, right. So it's a little bit more of an investment, but still nothing crazy. Um, and so that's a possibility, if you, especially if you like what you've seen from Hooker. And then I like if I really mess around and mess up on a quarterback and, and maybe I maybe I have Kyler, or maybe I'm not sh- really sure about my QB2, I might just take Trask and Baker late, both. And yeah. I got a quarterback, right? Sure. Um, I'm not, for some reason, super – Howell's like the one guy I'm like really not – haven't been interested in and maybe yeah, that's a mistake it really just depends on where he's end up going if he if it starts to hang around and get late i'll, I'll roll the dice fuck it like yeah you know i'll it, take same thing with ritter i'll take ritter a little earlier th- th- than than howell um and i know maybe people don't love that but you know ritter in the 13th round or so if he's gonna hang around that late like the 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 falcons have really instilled a, a seemingly a, a fair amount of confidence and they've never wavered off the ritter train here uh so and arthur smith is a guy who you know had Tannehill. uh you know doesn't doesn't need outstanding quarterback play i just need you to facilitate uh, you know the, he he likes what he's doing they got Bijan. all of a sudden they have an, a really good offensive line and an outstanding cast around him uh their big three you could put it up against potentially anybody's in drake london kyle pitts and and uh and Bijan. uh so and, and they've re-signed and re and 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 kept that offensive line really strong so i think he's got a good chance to to have you know a decent season here just doesn't need to do anything stupid and it'll be all right ritter is uh 10-6 or 114 overall in our adp so that's a little hot and then i think he's like in the 11th yeah that might be that's a little high for me mid like 11th round hangs for, around i'll, I'll on be a sleeper in. i think that's I, th- I haven't gotten ritter yet right um but i mentioned how because he's going a little higher than i'm ever really looking at him either but then like jacoby Brissett, free for free Free, yeah. He's, I, I would almost bet a pie to the face if Brissett makes starts this year for you. You know what I mean? Maybe not for you, but for the right. for the uh, Washington Commanders. football team. Right. And <laughs> and there's some weapons over there. A ton of weapons. So yeah. not Brissett unlike, can like fucking do it. He right. can do it. He can he could he can have manage it, but he for, can do it. He can manage you a couple of games for sure. some weeks and, and or put maybe up some the okay second numbers. half of the season if he right. gets hurt or something. Like that's right. a good little backup for free. Right. So. Little, little, some stabs there for yeah, you. Yeah, or late, Howell's late, just not late. working out, and they they throw right. Brissett in at the end of the season just to mm-hmm. see, or, or maybe they'll just let uh, Howell ride it out. And then uh, you mentioned Mike White. Oh uh, yeah, Mike White. If you're drafting Tua at any have point, to. you have to Must. get Tua. But Mike White, you know, and I hate to I hate to prey on uh, an Tua? injury that we don't want to see happen. But Mike White came in, played some good ball for the Jets. Yeah, the 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 uh, the Dolphins went in, kind of seemed to make that a priority, get a decent backup. And mm-hmm. I think Mike White can come in and facilitate again with a bunch of weapons around him, and he's pretty much free. So easy money. A lot of lot of lot of cheaper options here uh for, for your super flex pleasure. Yeah, we appreciate y'all for joining us. Make sure you hit that like, subscribe button. Join us over on the patreons.com slash the FF Dynasty. We can get access to the access to the Discord, access to this uh ADP, extra shows. It's just a good time. Heads, people heads are falling people. off. Yeah. And if you can't do that, you know, uh, let's, let, me, let me get a five-star review on the iTunes or the Spotify. Maybe you want to get a, fr- a fresh tea over at therevelrybrewingco.com. Hit the shop up. There's a link down in the description for you. Hit me in the comment section. Appreciate y'all for joining us. We'll see you next time. Peace.